Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Scale Modeling with Mike Ashey. Today, we're gonna do something different. We're gonna talk about aircraft lap joints and butt joints. What's a butt joint? Well, that's where the aircraft skin comes together over a frame like this, and there's a tiny channel there that we call panel lines. And then there are lap joints, which means that the skins overlap each other. So, we're gonna show you pictures of different types of aircraft like a B-17, a B-25, an ME-262, a Dauntless dive bomber, an F-4F Wildcat, an F-6F Wellcat, just to name a few. And then we're gonna talk about this a little bit on the backside. So, let's get started. On this B-17, the vertical line is a butt joint with a double row of rivets on each side. This is the connection point between the front and the back of the fuselage framing. Note how big the raised rivets are. The horizontal lines are lap joints, which usually have just one row of rivets. The remaining surface of the B-17 fuselage is covered with horizontal lap joints. The lap joints on the tail area of this B-17G are very distinctive. The sheeting is less than a sixteenth of an inch thick. The upper surfaces of the B-17 wings are also lap jointed. Note how the overlaps face the trailing edge of the wing. There are some butt joints on the lower wing areas on a B-17, and these are panels that can be removed for access to the interior areas. The butt joint spacing between the sheets of metal is about a sixteenth of an inch. The fuselage of this F-4F Wildcat are covered with lap joints and raised rivets. Note how the edges of the sheeting point towards the rear of the fuselage. Here's a nice close-up of the lap joints and the rivets on the Wildcat fuselage. The wing sheeting on the Wildcat is mostly butt jointed and the spacing is about a sixteenth of an inch between the sheet edges. The elevator on the Wildcat also has butt joints and flush rivets. The inconsistent spacing is due to the age of the framing. The panels on the side of this F-14 Tomcat are butt jointed. The channels between the sheeting is in some places less than a sixteenth of an inch and in other places about an eighth of an inch. As I examined the surface of the Tomcat up close, I noticed something I had never seen before. Focus on the area inside the circle. The butt joint channels between the surface sheeting are filled with a caulking material. The vertical butt joint just below the left arrow is still filled with caulk, making that butt joint channel almost disappear. On this SBD Dauntless, the entire surface of the fuselage is lap jointed with raised rivets except where the removable panels are for the engine. The lap joints sweep to the back of the fuselage with the edges facing towards the tail. Moving in a bit and looking straight at the SPD's fuselage surface, you can see the thickness of the sheeting. The lap joints on the SPD go all the way to the tail of the fuselage. The inner surfaces of the SBD's wings are also covered with lap joints and raised rivets.
The outer surfaces of the SBD wings are also lap jointed, however, the rivets are flush. The underside surfaces of the SBD's wings are also lap jointed. Much to my surprise, this beautiful IJN George was also lap jointed on the fuselage surfaces with flush rivets. Moving in closer to the George's surface, you can see the round, shallow indentations made by each flush rivet. In this photo, you can clearly see how the designer of this aircraft placed the sheeting and consequently the lap joints on the aircraft's framing. The elevator of the George is also lap jointed. This P-47 Thunderbolt still flies and it is located at the Sevierville, Tennessee Airport Air Museum. Note the subtle lines between the surface panels. The fuselage sides of the P-47 are all butt jointed except in one area. Note how tight the channels are between the surface panels. Here you can start to see the flush rivets along the edges of each panel. Since this aircraft is still airworthy, the sheeting covering it and the rivets are in excellent condition. In this close-up you can see the lap joint on the sheeting which covers the upper spine of the airframe. And you can also see how tight the butt joints are. The indentations around the surfaces of each flush rivet are much less pronounced than on the IJN George. The rudder butt joints on this P-47 were so tight I could not get a business card to slip into the channel of any of the butt joints. I always thought the F6F Hellcat was all butt jointed together, and I was sure surprised when I examined the fuselage up close. Here you can clearly see the lap joints on the fuselage sides of the Hellcat. The lap joint sheets on the spine of the Hellcat are very pronounced and sweep towards the back of the fuselage. The wings on a Hellcat are butt jointed with flush rivets and the spacing is about a sixteenth of an inch. These Hellcat butt joints are still pretty tight considering the age of this aircraft and they are less than a sixteenth of an inch wide. The elevator on the Hellcat is also butt jointed with flush rivets. On this B-25 Mitchell, most of the surface of the fuselage is lap jointed, except in one area. The thickness of the sheeting is slightly less than a sixteenth of an inch. As we move along the surface of the fuselage toward the wing, the covering is all lap jointed. There is a butt joint on the lower fuselage just aft of the wing. There is also a butt joint on the upper surface of the fuselage, but it's set further back along the wing. 
The aft fuselage area on the B-25 is also all lap jointed. On the underside of the B-25's wings, there are both butt joints and lap joints. Here is an example of a butt joint on the underside of the wing of the B-25. The F4U Corsair's fuselage is all butt jointed together. As we move along the fuselage, the butt joints can be clearly seen. The space in between the sheeting is about a sixteenth of an inch. Had this Corsair been in flying condition, the spacing would be much tighter, just like on the airworthy P-47 Thunderbolt. The surfaces of the wings of the Corsair are all butt jointed with flush rivets, and the spacing is about a sixteenth of an inch. One sixteenth of an inch is 0 .0625 inches. To calculate this width on a 132nd scale aircraft, it would be 0 .0625 divided by 32, and that number is 0 .002 inches. On a 148 scale aircraft, the width would be 0 .0013 inches. For a frame of reference, a typical sheet of paper is, be is between 0 .003 and 0 .004 inches thick. So in 132nd scale, an engraved or raised panel line representing a butt joint is less than the width of a sheet of paper. In 148th scale, the panel line would be about a third the thickness of a sheet of paper. Those are some pretty tiny widths. Even the flaps on the Corsair have butt joints and flush rivets. The leading edges of the Corsair's wings are also all butt jointed together. Even the leading edges that cover the guns are also all butt jointed. This airworthy P-51 Mustang is all butt jointed together just like the Corsair. The channels between the panels are very tight just like on the P-47 Thunderbolt. This P-51 Mustang is in the same air museum as the P-47. The sheet covering and associated butt joints on the leading edges of the wings of the P-51 look very different than on other aircraft. The flush rivets on the wings of the P-51 are also so well done, they are hard to detect unless you are very close to the surface. This ME-262 two-seat trainer was located outside the main gate of the Willow Grove Naval Air Station in, Pens in Pennsylvania. The Pensacola, Florida National Air Museum acquired this aircraft which was in pretty poor shape after sitting outside for over 40 years. The surface of the ME-262's fuselage was all butt jointed, and the tiny channels between the surface panels were filled so that the surface appeared smooth and uniform. Stepping in close, you can just barely make out the butt joint channels. These access panels should be much tighter together. However, the age of the aircraft prevents a perfect fit. This is a nose area of a B-29 Superfortress. Note how tight the horizontal butt joint channels are, and they are about 132nd of an inch, or 0 .0313 inches. 
In 148 scale, the engraved line that represents this butt joint should be about 0 .0007 inches. In 172nd scale, it would be virtually undetectable. The vertical butt joint is very distorted due to the age of the aircraft. This engine nacelle on this B-26 Invader is badly distorted due to its age and the fact that it's been sitting in the Florida sun for decades. It should have a channel width between the panels of less than a sixteenth of an inch. So, after looking at all these different aircraft, where does that leave us with respect to scale model aircraft? Well, here's what I think. Lap joints are best represented on scale model aircraft by very petite and very tiny raised panel lines. And butt joints are best represented by very petite and very tiny engraved lines in the larger scale model aircraft series. And it's okay for scale model aircraft to have both raised lines where there are lap joints and engraved lines where there are butt joints. And to have both tiny petite bumps for raised rivets and tiny petite indentations for flush rivets. And just one last picture. I found this photo at a small FAA Air Museum at the Marathon Airport in the Florida Keys. This D3, DC3 have been flying through a lot of dirty air and much to my surprise all the edges of the lap joints and the raised rivets are all accented with black staining. What this photo validates is the fact that weathering scale model aircraft is just as accurate as not weathering them. The question is how much weathering? And that answer is simple. It's up to you. After all, scale modeling is a hobby, and creativity and having fun is what our hobby is all about. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed the pictures of the different types of aircraft that we presented to you today. It's just food for thought. So, the next time you have a debate about panel lines versus inking them in or sanding them off, think about what we talked about during the course of the video. And I highly recommend that you visit air museums all over the country and take lots of pictures. My favorite air museum is the Pensacola Air Museum in Pensacola, Florida at the Old Naval Base there. This is the only museum, and I've visited lots of museums around the country, this is the only museum where you can actually walk up to the aircraft and touch an actual Japanese Zero. So with that, don't forget to visit us at www.mikeashy.com. Have a great day, happy scale modeling, and be safe.